Let's learn Langraph. The goal is to make a chatbot to talk to Kubernetes. But hold on, there's a twist. We make this chatbot realistic. So it's gotta deal with incorrect user input, typos, and absolute mayhem. We'll be going through all the frigging code and explore some agentic patterns to see what makes Langraph so awesome. Time to get started. We're gonna start with a little bit of theory. Don't you dare skip, it's important. Langraph, as the name suggests, is a graph of agents, where each node is essentially a function connected to other nodes by edges. You can do whatever you want with these functions. For example, you could call an LLM. Open AI? Really? We use local LLMs here. That's right. Adobe Llama 3.2 all the way. Okay, so you can make an LLM call in these functions, but you can also call an external system like Kubernetes. The point is that each node is just a function. But how do these functions coordinate? Well, they do that by passing a state object around. Each node function accepts a state object as an input and returns an updated state object as the output, which gets passed around to the next node. In our example, we start with a state object containing the user's request. The LLM will update the state to include the parameters for the function call. The function node will use those parameters to call the function and update the state with the final response. So in essence, Langraph is a framework to build state machines. Well, that's enough jibber jabber. Let's have a look at some code. We start by defining the schema of our state object. It's just a class which will store the entire conversation history in the messages list. In other words, every node will append to this array at the end of their turn. For anyone wondering, this add messages functions is a helper to append a list of messages to the state. We'll get back to it in a minute. Let's make our first agent or node, whatever you want to call it. Like I mentioned earlier, every node always accepts a state object as an input. For us, the state will hopefully contain the user's initial message. We then get an instance of the model. This is just an OpenAI client that is pointing to my local server. I'll be using the 8 billion parameter version of Llama 3.1 today. Next, we define a simple system prompt and pass the entire conversation history up to this point to the model. We will return a response which updates the state. In Langraph, we don't really need to return a new state object. We simply return the fields we want to update. So here, we are only returning the model's response. Remember the add messages annotation we added in the state? Yeah. That was actually a reducer, which merges the array we are returning here with the messages which are already present in the list. Time to make our first graph. So we first create a graph builder from our state. Then we add our nodes, followed by the edges. Always remember to specify the start and end nodes. And finally, we compile the graph. We now use this graph in our main function. Let's ask the user for a question. Shove it as the first message in our state and run the graph. I've also added some debug logs to just see how each node will be updating our state. So let's run it. Put in a question, and there we go. But wait, it's telling us to run a command. I mean, it is the right command, but I am lazy just like my editor. And wasn't the point of AI to replace me so I don't have to do any work? It's time to give AI the power to talk to the external world was unnecessary. So let's start by creating the function which can get some data from Kubernetes. Here's the code. Don't worry too much about it. The function itself is not that important. This is the important part. We need to annotate the function so that the model can understand what the function does. We start with the tool decorator Langchain gives us. We then annotate every parameter our function expects. Again, it's completely fine if you don't know what any of these parameters mean. That's pretty much the point. We let AI decide the value of these parameters for us. All we need to do is provide detailed descriptions to make sure AI can figure out our parameter values accurately. Just remember that you can create a tool to do anything. For example, you could create a tool to execute a SQL query. Just accept the SQL query as a parameter, execute it in the body, and return the result as a string. Okay. This was just a function that will act as our tool. That is, it's a function which can be called by our model. We still need to write a Langraph node function, which accepts the state object and returns a new state. That's the rule. 
Luckily for us, LangGraph gives us a handy utility to create that node basis our list of tools. If your state is just a list of messages as what we have, this class is all you need. The last thing left for us to do is to make a new LLM node which is aware of this tool. Again, LangChain makes this super easy for us. Simply bind the list of tools with the model. Let's hook this all up. Our graph will now start with the engineer node we just created followed by the tool node. The rest is pretty much the same. Let's see it in action. Pass in the request. The engineer decides to make a tool call and we have a response. Awesome! We got one tiny problem though. What will happen if I mess up the input ever so slightly? The engineer fails. And this isn't just a problem because of bad input. It's possible that the engineer might not have the knowledge required to identify the right parameter values. Guys, it's just the 8 billion parameter model. Give it a break. It's a free tool. A free tool. Just like my editor. Hey, I was just kidding. Of course you are. So how do we solve this problem? Add a new expert agent who will help us identify the right parameters. Here's the code. It's pretty similar to what you've seen thus far. Notice that I'm adding some of my custom data into the user's original message. This data could come from a RAC pipeline, a PDF document, or even an API call. It doesn't really matter. That's the beauty of having agents as functions. It's so easy to extend and add custom functionality. Let's modify the graph to introduce this custom agent. Let's fire it away. Give it an input. The expert has correctly identified the function parameters. And now the engineer is working as expected. And just like that, by introducing a tiny agent, we have made our chatbot way more reliable. Hold on, we cannot celebrate just yet. Cause we're not done. We are assuming that our human will provide us with accurate info. In our example, we are assuming the user will know the right value for the namespace parameter. But what if our system is provided with the wrong parameter value? That's completely possible. Our chatbot should be smart enough to fix something like that. But let's introduce yet another node to fix that. Don't worry, these are tiny 8 billion parameter models. They're fast and they're cheap. So we have a new namespace verifier agent. We will manually query the list of possible namespace values and shove it in its system prompt. This way, the agent will be able to verify and even correct invalid input. Over to our graph, we want to run this agent after the expert, but we don't need to run it every single time. We'll run it only if the user has specified the namespace parameter, which we need to verify. LangGraph gives us the ability to add conditional edges. Here's our logic. We select the namespace verifier agent if the namespace value was not all. Otherwise, we skip straight to the engineer. Let's run this. The database namespace does not exist. I'm giving it the wrong value on purpose. Oh, the expert chose the wrong namespace value. That does not look good. But now that our verifier has kicked in, it figured it out. The namespace name was supposed to be DB and not database. And the engineer goes ahead and uses the right value to call the tool. There we have it, self-correcting AI. We're still not done yet. We're still assuming that our user will enter something sensible. What if our human enters something stupid? Wait a minute, subscribing to this channel is not stupid. And I bet everyone has already done it, right? Right? Wow, okay, I see how it is. I am gonna wait. Go ahead, subscribe right now. And hit the like button while you're down there. Just do it. Now that wasn't too hard now, was it? I bet they did not do it. The point is that we need to verify the user's input before we give it to the Kubernetes bot. Let's make a brand new graph for this. We make a new state object with just three keys. One to store the user's question, one to store if the question was valid or not, and the last one is just for debugging purposes. Oh, that's right. You don't really need to store the entire conversation history. You can literally store anything you want. I really need to stop winking whenever I say that. Let's quickly make a human input node. This will be empty because it's just a placeholder. We'll come back to it in a bit. Then we have the verifier agent. We have asked it to return a JSON response containing whether the user's question is valid. We can simply store its result in the state. Let's set up the graph. 
We first get the human input. Then comes the verifier. We will end if the input was valid, otherwise we'll go back to get another input. But this time we compile the graph a bit differently. We added a check pointer and an interrupt. So technically, we could have asked the user for an input in the human input node. But this would cause the graph's execution to halt till the user provides an input. This is bad because we never know how or when the user will provide us an input. Not everyone is building a terminal app, right? So the Langgraph team decided to add support to halt the entire execution of the graph instead. This way we can resume the graph whenever we have received the user's input. The last question left to answer is where would the state of the graph be stored while it's in the suspended state? The check pointer. The check pointer is the stateful layer where Langgraph stores the output of each step that the graph executed. It's for replayability. Don't worry about this too much. I will drop a link to the docs for anyone interested to know more. Just remember, this mechanism is what makes Langgraph work like a state machine. All that's left to do is bind the graphs into one super graph. So we make yet another state class. Remember, each graph needs its own state. We create two nodes. One node for each graph. The human input node will add the user's question to the state. The Kubernetes response node will use that message to pass it to the Kubernetes bot graph. Now to be fair, there are multiple ways to do this. Link to the docs in the description below. I think calling the graphs manually in each function gives you maximum flexibility. The rest of the process is pretty much the same. Let's run it again. Give it an invalid question. Cool, A rejected it and it's asking us again. Let's put in a valid request this time. All right, it's moving on to the Kubernetes bot. And, and it works. Beautiful. This was just the beginning. Check out this video to explore the various agentic patterns that you can use to build resilient AI applications. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech boy. You're on YouTube and hopefully, in real life.